Destiny Church, good morning. How we doing? We're glad to be in the house of the Lord once again here on this amazing Sunday. Let's all stand. We welcome each and every one of you out here this morning. Those who are watching us live, welcome. We're so excited to be here in the house of the Lord. Let's all bow our heads. We're going to pray before we start the service, leaving it in the Lord's hands. Amen. Father, we're so grateful to be here once here in your house once again, Father, on this morning. Father, just start off our morning here giving you glory and giving you all praise, Lord. Just prepare our hearts right now, Father, as you as you uh, speak to us today, Father, just across your word, through your word that is being brought today, Father, that's going to be as an, an inspiration, Father, from you of who you are, Lord. And as well, Father, just prepare us today, Father, to give us uh, all your praise and all your glory and all your worship that you deserve here in this day, God. We thank you for each individual that's here, every person that's on their way, Father, or every person that's watching this live as well, Lord. Let this service be impacting, Father, not, not, not because of what we did, but because of what you're doing through us, Lord. And so we thank you this morning for it's in Jesus' name we pray and we say amen, amen. Come on, let's give the Lord praise here this morning. He deserves it today. He is so awesome to be glory, glorified here today. It's a glorious day to worship him today. Amen. Let's worship. Come on, let's get our hands together today. Let's see it together. We say, Cause I was buried beneath my shame. Oh, and who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb till I met you. Come on, let's lift our voice. I was breathing. And I was breathing, but not alive. And all my failures I tried to hide. It was my tomb till I met you. Come on, let's say we called my name. You called my name. And I ran out of that grave. Into your glorious name, you called my name, and I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness, into your glorious name. Hey. Oh, and now your mercy. So come on, say now your freedom, and now your freedom is all that I know. Lift it up, say the old made new, the old made new. Jesus, when I met you, you called my name, you called my name. Say, and I ran out of that grave, out of. heavy but chains break at the weight of your glory i needed shelter i was an orphan now you call me a citizen of heaven when i was broken you were my healing now your love is the air that i'm breathing i have a future my eyes are open because when you call me Oh, my name. 
this rose, there is a fountain that drowns sorrows. There is an ocean deeper than fear. The tide is rising, rising. There is a current stirring deep inside. It's overflowing from the heart of God. A flood of heaven crashing over. I'm a 
So this next song we're singing is a brand new song, and we're just singing of his name, Jehovah, and all the names that he is and all the power that comes from him today. Come on, let's get this hands together. Go like this. Yeah. Say, he shames every idol. Jehovah Nisi fights your battles. We say, Jehovah Nisi fights your battles. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Jireh meets your needs. 
Jehovah Rapha, heal your body. Jehovah Shalom, be your peace. Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Nisi, fight your battle. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Jireh, meet your needs. Oh, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Rapha, heal your body. Jehovah Shalom, be your peace. Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Nisi, fight your battle. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Jireh, meet your need. Jehovah Rapha, heal your body. Jehovah Shalom, be your peace. Call the name. Call the name. And call the name. And call the name. Jehovah. All our praise. And all our praise. All our praise belongs to Him. Call the name. Call the name. your battle. Jehovah Jireh meets your need. Jehovah Rapha, heal your body. Jehovah Shalom, be your peace. Jehovah Nisi, fight your battle. Jehovah Jireh meets your need. Jehovah Rapha, heal your body. Jehovah Shalom, be your peace. Hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah. You know, I was thinking about that scripture where it says, like, our praise destroys our enemies. Whatever he's trying to bring against you, your praise, what we lift up. It's kind of like uh, one of the stories in the Bible where there was an ambush, and it was just through praise that they were able to amp, set up an ambush. The Lord, you know, just told them to go out and praise, you know. So our weapons of our warfare are mighty to the pulling down of the enemy's stronghold. And praise defeats the enemy. And as we sing about Jehovah, all of our needs, everything that we have need of, he's there to meet it, you know. And that, it, to me, it's like a joy just to know that and to serve him and to know that we have an advocate. We, got a, we have a mighty God that we serve. Whatever your need is this morning, it don't even matter how small it is. He can meet it or how big it is. The bigger the need, the greater our God. You know, in our weaknesses, he becomes strong. So we lift these needs up to you this morning, God, with praise and thanksgiving because we know that you are a mighty God. God, we know that you hear us when we pray and that you meet every need. We lift them up to you, God. Come on, whatever that thing is that you can't even solve, we lift it up to you, God. Whatever the situation is, only he can fix it. So, Father, we come to you right now, and we lift up every need to you. God, we thank you for financial needs being met. You know what we have need before we could even ask or think, and that just blows my mind. But we thank you for that, for meeting that need right now. For those that need healing, Lord, in our bodies, we lift that up to you, God. We pray for healing. We thank you that you bore stripes for our healings and diseases. So we lift it up to you, and we thank you this morning that there's healing at the hem of your garment. So we reach out now, and we thank you, Father, for healing right now. We thank you, Lord, that you restore relationships, Lord. Every relationship that's been broken, God, you know in our hearts situations and things that we've been trying to work out on our own, but we give it to you right now, God. We thank you for restoring break of broken relationships, Lord, with our sons and in our daughters, Father, mothers and fathers, Lord. We thank you for restoration this morning. We, we embrace it and we just believe you, oh God. We stand on your word, Lord. God, we thank you for your peace. 
your mercy, loving kindness, and we rejoice in that, God. We thank you for your joy being in us, Father, through every situation, Father, and we give you praise. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. grateful for this moment right now that we can come and sing to your name and just through this next song Father we are reminded of what you did for us on how we have a new life in you and in how you saved us God we glorify you this morning what the mercy of God can do. Now I'm alive to tell the story and how I've overcome. It's His goodness and mercy and the power and based on what I've done. It's His goodness and mercy and the power of the blood. Oh, there's power in your blood, Jesus. No, I thought that I deserved to be six feet beneath the earth for all the things I've done the things I've said the days the choices I regret oh I would still be lost oh but for the mercy of God Come on, we all sing this together. We say, now I'm alive to tell the story on how I've overcome. It's His goodness and mercy and the power of His blood. I'm so glad that my freedom wasn't based on what I've done. It's His goodness and mercy and the power of the blood. Oh, it's because of the power of your blood, Jesus. Hey, and was a cross meant for me where my Savior carried. Now I've been made free by the mercy the cross and was the cross meant for me that my Savior carried. Now I've been made free by the mercy of God and was the grave meant for me where my sin lay buried. Now I stand redeemed by the mercy. Now I now I'm alive to tell the story on how I've overcome. It's His goodness and mercy 
and the power of his blood. I'm so glad that my freedom wasn't based on what I've done. It's his goodness and mercy and the power of his blood. It's his goodness and mercy and the power of his blood. It's his goodness and mercy and the power of his blood. So we thank you this morning, God, that we were reminded of what you did on that cross for us and what the power of that blood did for our lives as you changed it and you turned it around and made us new. And so we are grateful this morning that we can come before your presence and be reminded of what your mercy did for us, God. Thank you, Lord, for loving us so much. And we love you right back, God, and we thank you this morning. And we leave this time in your hands now. It's in Jesus' name we pray. We say amen. Amen, amen. Come on, let's give God glory and praise one more time here in this house. Amen, amen, amen. Wow, how awesome it is to be and start here our morning to come and worship in here with our brothers and sisters all together. Well, welcome to Destiny Church. We're so glad that you joined us here this morning. We're going to give you a few seconds to greet each other and we will continue with the service. Amen. Well, good morning, everybody. Good to see you out in the house of the Lord. I pray that you had a great week once again this week and so happy to have you back with us today as we celebrate Jesus. Everybody say amen to that. We celebrate his life, uh, his moving in our lives, him allowing us to be a part of his kingdom and all that God has for us. And we welcome you for those that may be the first time in one of our services here at uh, Destiny Church. Um, we are so happy that you're taking time out to be with us today, and we're so appreciative that your schedule has allowed you to come and fellowship with us. If we have anybody here, this is your first time in service with us, and so just raise your hand. We want to acknowledge you. Thank you for coming out, sir, uh, being a part of us. Give him a hand. Uh, thank you for being with us today. We look forward to all that God has for you as well as you're here in our presence, not only here in this building, but we acknowledge 
um, say welcome to those that are in our mission campus, actually located in the city of Alton. Uh, so uh, we're, we're so uh, happy to be live streaming into there and say so welcome to you guys as well. And if we have any first time guests there at our missions campus this morning, well, welcome to you. And we're so happy that you're joining with us and we're looking forward to all that God has for us today. This past week, uh, we were, we had our Grace International uh, Convention, which is an annual event, and we, it happens up in our, our national headquarters, is located up in the Woodlands area. And so uh, we have uh, ministries from, that was represented from actually around the, the world. Uh, I think this past year, they announced this, uh, I guess we have uh, ministries or churches or some type of inroads into 126 lo places around the world, we'll say continents or wherever, but around the world in which uh, ministries are happening. And so we're so, uh, many of you have gotten the opportunity to uh, meet uh, some of those uh, international ministries. They come, they, you know, they were here with us. I don't think we've had anybody here with us this year. Well, we had Lucas Levine. He's one of our international min ministers as well. But they minister the word of God. And so we got a chance to hear some great stories about what God is doing as well as that. I want to acknowledge we continue to pray for the nation of Israel and everything that's happening over in our Middle East. So keep lifting them up in that area, in that region of the world up that God's uh, providential hand will be seen in the lives of uh, his plan and for his plan and his purposes to be, unveil, be revealed. But as I was saying a moment ago, uh, but other regards, we're just hearing great stories about things that was happening around the world and we're celebrating those things. And we'll have, we don't have video this week, but we'll have a video, uh, updated video to show next week that's showing some of the different activities that uh, we are engaging in. So. Uh, one of the wonderful stories I want to share with you guys about what God was doing, and we're getting ready to receive our morning's tithes and offerings. And this month, one of the things that we're focusing on in our giving time is especially God has placed in my heart for the month of April for us. We're believing for increase in the financial increase into the life of God's people. Specifically, I'm praying for breakthrough for some people in this month of April. Everybody say amen. If you're not believing for it, believe for somebody else. All right. If you're saying, hey, I'm good. Great. I'm glad you are good. But believe for somebody else, they, they can experience, if they're in need of a financial breakthrough or increase in their finances, that they will experience it this month. And I'm expecting to hear great testimonies of what God has done uh, and God is doing throughout the course of this month uh, later on. And we'll share those as that go forward. But one of the things that I heard, going back to our Grace Conference, one of the things that I heard is in, rev you know, in line with our, uh, with our financial aspects of things that hap happens in our lives. Uh, Pastor Steve, who's the, past, who's the president of our organization, and he pastors the Grace Church there in the Woodlands area, share, sharing a story with us that uh, they have been believing for some property or some uh, ability to do some additional ministries in their areas. And one of the aspects that they were focusing on was the ministry of compassion-based ministry. So when I say compassion-based ministries, I'm talking about one of the things they wanted to, they wanted to do was have a place for uh, people or young people when they're in the foster care system in the state of Texas. Many of you guys may be aware of it, some may not. When, a, when someone in the foster care system reaches the age of 18 in the state of Texas, they're just put out of the system. And, you know, the state of Texas released, I guess, whatever responsibilities they had or whatever financial assistance they were giving them at that time. And that person, male or female, are on their own to kind of figure out life, which is a horrendous thing to do. Uh, but that's just, the, that's just the system. And one of the other things that compassion base will come, you know, we hear a whole lot about people sex trafficking today and the things that's going on in that realm, they wanted to have a place where they can come in and they, could, they can provide aid and assistance to anyone that was inflicted with, you know, sex trafficking and, and maybe young ladies that was dealing with uh, making a quality of life decision for their unborn child. They can have that place to go and people that was dealing with addiction. So when you're looking at compassion-based ministries, all of those things. Well, lo and behold, they didn't have a plan how to do it. That was just something that was on their hearts. And, and so there was a property that was located at the rear of their property that became available. This property housed 
It was a medical facility. It had about 115 rooms in it, about 92 bathrooms in it. It was very high quality uh, building. And uh, so pandemic hit a few years ago and they were not, that business was not able to rebound from the, from the pandemic and they ended up shutting their doors. I'm trying to shorten the story here. Was short, uh, had to close their doors. The owner of the building called uh, Grace Church or Pastor Steve and told him, hey, we're selling our building and I would love, somehow they connected, I would love for the church to have this building. Uh, the building was valued in the millions of dollars. Uh, and so the owner of the building called and says, hey, I, I would love to have it. And he and, and Pastor, she and Pastor Steve talked and they came into agreement, and as the story goes, that she told him, hey, here's exactly what you need to do. Here's exactly what you need to offer the bank, and within a, a matter of a day or so, this business transaction took place. That's a miracle by itself. For anybody dealing with finances, you know, it takes a while for that to go, and, and what happened was her, built, her bank, her had, bank had agreed to sell him the property. He had, you know, received the financial... Uh, Back in that they needed for the church to purchase the property, the bank was going to finance the property for 100 percent of the value. You know, that's a that's a miracle because normally you got to go in with 20, 25 percent down of whatever your property that you're purchasing. And they were able to purchase it. And all of this happened in the context of one day. And so that was a miracle in itself. And the building is fully furnished. And I think the building, they paid about three point something million for the, the building. The building was worth about seven something million dollars or, or whatever that is. And I, I'm looking at numbers and saying, wow, wow, wow. But what God is able to do is exceedingly abundant, what you can ask or imagine. And so they were able to get the building for 50 percent of the value of it. All right. So they were going to pay. And I'm not, I don't remember all the numbers, so I'm giving you roundabout figures. Don't say, well, hey, let me go look it up on the website. I'm giving you what I can remember from it. So they paid a, I'm, I'm, you know, a few dollars off here or there. So they paid about three million something for the building. He said in the, within, the, within probably about a couple days later after they had signed the contract for the building, there was another nonprofit organization that called them and heard about what they were intending to do with the building and what their vision was for the building. They asked for it, said, hey, can we have a meeting with you? Uh, I guess or Pastor Steve said that he didn't have any relationship with them or anything. They just heard about the vision. and says, hey, we want to meet with you about this. So they have their meeting and they sit down and as they're in the context of their conversation, the, the, this other organization that's not affiliated with Grace said, hey, you know what? We believe in what you're doing. We want to pay the building off for you. And so they paid the building off, I'm talking, and I think they paid the building off, the back, some of the back interest that the, that the other company owed on the building, some of the other taxes and stuff, because it wasn't a front. So I think he said by the end of the day, this other nonprofit building organization paid about $7 million off. And they walk away with a building that they can be able totally debt free of it. So I, I look at that, and you think about, man, wow. I said, you know what? It's just not about a building. It's about the vision. And God provides us what? The provision where there is a vision that he has given. And he is, because he knows that, hey, they're going to be, well, I'm going to bring increase into the life of that church because I can trust them with what I'm going to increase into their hands. And I want to bring all that back to us because we've got to get ready. I'm bringing all that back to us that God wants to bring increase into your life. But can he trust you with the increase yes. that he wants to bring into your life? And when you walk it out, you'll start understanding that God is a God that can do miracles. I woke up the next morning thinking about the numbers because I'm a numbers person. I woke up, wait a minute, how in the world they didn't make a payment on the building and they own it outright. God did all of this before the first note was due. What can God do in your life? Some of you guys, I know that's, that's hard to believe because I told you I woke up the next morning like, if I didn't know him, do I believe him? <laughs> yeah. 
but I do know him, and I know that he's not, what he says is trustworthy and true, and he just goes and say, God can do supernatural things in your life. When God gives you a vision or a desire or tell you what, something that he has for you, God has the resources to be able to bring it to pass. You may not know how it's going to come into your life, but God has a way of making the right connections and the people that you need to connect with to make things happen in your life. And I'm praying for increase in the life of God's people today. And whether you are in a business or you are seeking to own a business or you just need a promotion on your job, I'm praying that God will bring everything into alignment that you can see and receive the provisions that he has for you. And that's for you this morning. You can just raise your hand. I'm going to pray in just a second. I'm not bringing the provisions into your life, but I'm telling you about a God that whom we trust and serve, he can bring it into it. So, Father, I thank you today for increase. This is the month that, Lord, we are believing for increase in our lives. It's supernatural abundance that will come from heaven. You say that you will open the windows of heaven and you will pour out such a blessings on our lives that it will overtake us. And Lord, we're believing for blessings to overtake your people this month. And we will rejoice and declare the glory and the power of our God in the supernatural things that you do. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say amen and amen and amen. I can't wait to hear your story. Our giving platform, they're going to put it on the screen in just a few seconds. If you're in person here this morning at either one of our locations, you can give at the end of the service at our giving station. is located in the rear of the building. Let's look at, take a look at our video announcements. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Destiny Church. Sit back and relax. I'm going to go over this morning's announcements with you. Hello, everyone, and there is a major correction to the team rally. We originally said it was going to be on the 26th, which is actually wrong. I do apologize. It is going to be Sunday the 21st at 5 p.m. The location is still to be determined, so please check our website for updates. We'll see you there. Do not miss this rally. There's going to be a lot going on that you do not want to miss. We'll see you there. And summer camp is right around the corner. Yes, Miss Beth said that there is still one spot left, so whoever's going to be the lucky kid to go, I would suggest you sign up immediately. Because now that we are getting closer to camp, that means fundraisers are needing to start. So if you still need help with getting funds to send your child to summer camp, please talk with Miss Beth as she will give you the fundraisers that are going to be happening pretty soon. See you then. Don't let your kid miss out on camp. First Wednesday service is coming up May 1st. If you would like to get baptized or if you know someone that would like to get baptized, please see Wanda and Carlos Villarreal for more information. Also, we need you to go register at our website at dcclute.org as soon as you can. Thank you so much, and we'll see you there. And Sunday, May 12th, will be our Mother's Day service. So you know how we do things. Bring your moms out as we honor them for everything that they have done for us in our lives. Once again, that's going to be Sunday, May 12th. And also, we will be having a slideshow. So if you want to upload five photos of yourself with your mother, please go to dcclute.org to upload the photos. Once again, only five, please, as we want to be respectful for everybody's time. But do it today. We want them two weeks prior to Mother's Day. So get in there, do it today, and do, don't forget. So we'll see you then on that day. That's once again going to be on Sunday, May 12th. And also during the Mother's Day service, we'll be having baby dedication. So if you have a young one that you would like to dedicate to the Lord, please go on our website and sign them up for the baby dedication. There'll be a big uh, ceremony that we're going to do during service, and you would not want to miss it. So once again, go on our website at dcclute.org to register your young one. And on Sunday, May 26th, we'll be honoring the seniors graduating from high school with our graduation service. How we do things here is that if you are a member of our church and you have a graduating senior, we would like to honor them, pray over them, and bless them as they are going out to school or whatever they're going to plan on doing uh, with the rest of their lives. We do not want to miss it. We also will have a slideshow for this as well. So if you have five photos of your little one graduating, please upload them at our website at dcclude.org. We'll see you there. And if you've been visiting for a while or even a short amount of time and you're interested in joining our family, please look into doing our Growth Track program. It's going to be every first and second Sunday of each month at 9 a.m. You can talk to Miss Loretha in the end of service. Thank you so much for joining us for service today. Whether if you're online or in person, remember, God can still do miraculous things through us. Please enjoy the service and God bless. All right. God bless everybody. Once again, grab your Bibles. Go over to the book of John. 
chapter number 16. We started a series of flowing with the Holy Spirit a few weeks ago, and we talked about led by truth, and then I think last week we talked about powered by the truth. This week we want to talk about inspired by truth. Inspired by truth. And as we, uh, as we do here with the opening of uh, my preaching time, we take a moment out and we invite the, the Lord through the power of the Holy Spirit to open our eyes that we can see and our ears that we will hear and our hearts that will be receptive to what he would say. And we, we ask him to speak so clearly to us in Jesus' name because we want to hear everything that he has to say to us today. And, and as we're looking through our topic Today, talking about inspired by truth, I started to kind of recollect in my mind and go back in my thoughts about some of the inspirational stories of the Bible. And just by hearing them, hearing inspired by truth, maybe there are some stories that automatically popped in your mind and surged to the front of your thoughts about different stories in the Bible. You can start from the book of Genesis and go through the book to the end of Revelation and see throughout the course of those 66 books uh, of the Bible, the different inspiring moments that people experienced in their lives from starting with Noah. You know, you read about his life and, and what he did. Noah was a man that obeyed God when it, and did something that God called him to do in building the ark that did not even make sense in that day, and, and that can inspire you to in your obedience to God when nobody else is around you and is walking in obedience to God. You are inspired to, I'm going to obey God and regardless of whatever the cost it may be for me because it doesn't make sense, but I still want to do what God is calling me to do. You can remember the story regarding Abram or Abraham, how God called him to leave the place where he was living at, his country, and go to a foreign land a place that he didn't even know, a place that was promised to him. And it may inspire you to take a, a monumental step in your life to walk out something that God is calling you to walk out when it doesn't make sense. It can inspire you. You can look at the story of David just throughout the Bible where David fought Goliath, the giant, and, and David, whenever everybody else was frozen with fear and intrepidation and and they were intimidated. David was the one that ran to take on his giant. And that can be in your own life or your walk where you got to face and, and stand up against an opposing foe that may seem larger than life. It may not be a physical person. It could be just a situation or a challenge that you're dealing with that you have to stand against that. And you say, you look at David's life or you can take those three Hebrew boys that was willing to stand in the fiery furnace. And you think that, man, that can inspire you. I'm going to stand for Jesus regardless of whatever it may cost me in life that I'm not going to bend or bow. Or if it costs me that I got to step in the pit of, of just a, a tough time or situation, I'm going to do what, what God has called me to do. And so there's many inspiring stories in the Bible that I, we could choose from. But I'm not just going to tell you about uh, just one inspiring story. I want to talk about what inspires us today because there's something that we draw inspiration from today. And so in my thought was, and as I was planning this morning, I was like, well, okay, well, let me just Google inspiring stories. And so I was looking through, and of course, I saw some just different things, and you don't understand what inspiration is. It's something that happens within us that helps us overcome life's adversities and challenges and setbacks and struggles. We hear how other people may have done some things to get beyond that, and that can help us when we're walking through and teaching us perseverance and teaching us to have the can-do thought when we're going about life's challenges. And I came to this website, saying all that to say, I came to this website that says 10 most read inspirational stories. Now, don't, don't text me or email me saying, well, I don't, where'd you get that information? I did not, I didn't write this, all right? This is what you said. You can say, don't text me. Well, that wasn't the most inspirational story that I've ever heard. Well, granted, it may not. But this is my research that I came up with. But it was 10 of the most inspirational stories, and I'm not going to take 
the time this morning, nor do we have the time to be able to read each one of those 10 stories. But I did pick two stories out of the 10, and I'm not going to read it to you in totality, but I want to give you a little bit of a summary, the meaning, and what could be the application in our lives regarding those stories this morning, and that will help us and maybe inspire us to greater heights in our walk today. One of the stories, I'm going to share one now, and I'll share one at the end of our closing time. One of the stories I heard, I read about it was the parable of the elephant rope. And that story, as I'm, I'm reading through 10 more, and this is like a little synopsis of it, the elephant was, in, this, in the story of the parable of the elephant rope, the elephant was conditioned to believe that he could never break away. He believed that the rope could still hold him, so he never tried to break free. And the summary of the story is, this is a short motivational story about a, a young man that was, had gone to the circus, and he was made an observation, and he was amazed that a, little, a rope and a little stake held this massive animal in place. Despite the massive size of the elephant, it was a rope and a little stake that kept him and confined to where they wanted to hold him at. It was, to him, it was clear that the elephant could break away from the bonds, but chose not to because he was conditioned to believe that it wasn't possible for him to break away. That's the summary of the story of it. The theme of it is, in this, it was the, uh, the elephant rope is a, it's a, sure, it's a story about limiting beliefs. The limiting belief is the, the young man learned that the elephant was conditioned from a young age to believe that he could never break free from a rope. As a result, the ele elephant never tried to gain his freedom. And I started thinking, I wonder how many people in their lives, because of their past, the things that they've gone through, have been limited in their beliefs of what they can do and how far they can go or how high they can soar to because of things that have happened and challenges that have come their way. The moral of this story is limited belief can hold us back from reaching our full potential. Even today that we know that the Bible tells us, Paul says, I can do all things through what? Christ who strengthens me. And so you can sometimes our limiting belief, even though we quote that verse and we know that is truth, that can limit us in based on what our pursuits are in life and what we are trying to attain to. And, he, and as the observation was, I wonder if, and I want to make sure, I wonder if there's any limiting beliefs in here today. You don't have to raise, and so we want to dispel those limiting beliefs because you're letting something so small hold you back from what God is calling you to. We know what the Bible says of in the book of Isaiah when we see our enemy, talking about angel Lucifer, we'll look at him and we'll say what? Is this he who calls the whole world to what? Tremble and shake. Because, and we'll see him for, in comparison to who we are in God, in comparison to who he is in, this, in life, that we are greater than what he's called us to do. And I want us to look at that with that thought in mind. Now go over to this, this limited belief and, and inspirational stories. I want us to go over to John chapter number 16, where we said we will start at this morning, because this is our foundational text. Starting in verse number 12, is, and Jesus is talking to his disciples, and we're aware of this. He says, I have much more to say to you, more than you can bear now. But when he, the spirit of truth, verse 13, when the spirit of truth come, he will what? Guide you into all truth. He will not speak of his own, but he will speak only of what he hears. And he will what? Tell you of what is yet to come. He, and I want to take our time together from that this morning because I want to pull from that thought of those verses of scripture to help help bring some insight to us because God has great things to come. I know we're living in a challenging time. I know we live in a challenging situations. I know that we, we live in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a world where things are changing. But here's what I do want to say is that God has a plan and a purpose for everything that's going on in life. There is nothing wasted in any aspect of our lives. And, and what we have to see is we have to, we have to see things 
by the truth of God's word, not by what's happening in the natural world in which we see. Now, we don't, we don't say what we see in the natural is not happening, but we say that what's happening in the spiritual world is greater than those things that are taking place in the natural world. And the spiritual world supersedes the natural world. And so when we look at things from that complex or that preview or that viewpoint, it will help us put things into place. Because when we're looking at inspired by truth, I want to tell you here what God is illustrating to us, and this is what Jesus is telling to his disciples is that the Holy Spirit is going to give us some insight about the things that are up ahead. That's what he says. He says he's going to tell you about what's to come, and he's going to guide us into what? All the truth. And when we're looking at this, I want to say this. That the way that he does it, he's going to inspire the hearts and the minds of God's people. He has been doing it through from the inception of the church. When we look at the book of Acts, he inspired the church. He inspired those men and women through the filling of their lives with the Holy Spirit. He inspired them to do great and awesome and mighty things. And he didn't inspire them just from their outward appearance, but he inspired them through their what? Their mind. That's what the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 12. Be ye transformed by what? The renewing. Come on, one more time. Be ye what? Transformed by the what? Renewing of your mind. And so what the, what, what the Holy Spirit does is, because we're going back, we've got to keep it in context of what he says. He's going to tell you the things to come. He takes what the Lord has done, he puts it in our minds, and he packs it in our minds so that we can know the heart of God. And so when we know the heart of God, we know the mind of God, we know the thoughts of God, are we going to walk there in just a few moments, then we're able to see the plans of God and the things that God wants us to walk out and the things that God wants us to do. And the Holy Spirit comes in and he gives us the insight of the things that are ahead and the things that we are to walk through in the name of the Lord Jesus. What happens is the Holy Spirit gives us insight, but then our natural minds tell us, you can't do that. You're not equipped to do that. How many of us have ever experienced that? You said, God told me to do this. God showed me I should be doing this. But then you find yourself not doing it. And why do you find yourself not doing it? Is it because you say, well I, well, I just don't have time. I don't think I can do it. No, if God told you to do something, isn't it God able to bring it to pass? We quote this verse in, no, I was going to say November, in Numbers chapter 23. We say this all the time. God is not a man that he should what? Lie. If he said it, so, so shall he what? Do it. And if so, if God is not a man that he can lie, if he said he's going to do it, what, not only what's written on the pages of the Bible, but when you say God said this to me, and this is what God told me he was going to do through me, God won't lie to you. Somebody, look at somebody and say, God don't lie to you. God won't lie to you. Now, God's not going to lie to you. If God has told you that this is what he wants to do through you, he's not lying when he says, I'll do this through you. He's going to bring it to pass. If God lied about anything that he ever said, all of his word would be null and void. Because he declares, I don't lie. And so what happens is, keep walking with me for a few moments. What happens is, in our minds, our minds are attacked. And our minds are attacked that our minds contradict what God is saying. And our minds start telling us, you can't do it. You're not equipped. You're not able. You're not smart enough. You don't have all of the education that you need. You don't have a whole enough backing in your life to be able to do this. But the Lord comes in and says, what I've called you to do. I'm able to bring those things to pass. I'm talking about being inspired by God. And so the Holy Spirit comes in and brings the truth, not only about what, who God is, but he brings the truth into our, in our lives about what? Who we are in Christ Jesus. And so when we're looking at all of those things, we're looking at how God wants to bring these things to pass. We can see how God will begin to put the pieces of the puzzles together in our life, and we can live this inspired life. In Christ Jesus, there was a story in the Bible in, in Acts chapter number three. Most of us will be very familiar with that story. 
is about when Peter and John was going to the temple to pray. When this thought is, I want to say that it was an ordinary day that caused Peter and John to step out in the truth by the healing of a man at the temple gate. And let's read through that story just really quick on uh, verse 2. Now man was, who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate, beautiful, where he was put, what, every day. He was there to beg for, for, from those that was going into the temple, he was there to beg for alms or for finances. And when he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, and as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. But Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give to you in the name of what? Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Or the, some Bibles, as it says on here, just says walk. And I start looking at that. Man, what an inspirational moment and in just the everyday occurrence of a person's life that their lives can be somebody else's life was transformed because somebody was inspired to walk out God's word. Somebody was inspired enough to do what God has called them to do. And I would wonder, you know, how many people here that you know that in your everyday course of your life that you're walking by somebody that you can be inspired where God tells you, hey, can you pray for this person? Can you, can you go to, God inspires you to take a step in this direction, but you choose, as you, sometimes you choose to, and sometimes you choose not to but if we're inspired by the Holy Spirit and he's calling us and he's telling us what to do that he wants to change and transform lives he has to he does it through what his church not just the building but his people and I will wonder we have to live these inspired lives because on a everyday regular you know going about your business that there's somebody's life could be changed we just read the story it says every day this person was brought where to the temple Every day. It wasn't about the person. Every day he was laid at the gate. Every day he begged for alms. But this one day, Peter felt, felt inspired to say something. He felt inspired to say, hey, I've been seeing you here, but today I want to offer you something greater than what? Silver and gold. I want to offer you something that's going to cause you to get up and rise up above where you're at. Every day that I've been seeing you here, I want to offer you some, someone that's going to help, help lift you up out of the despair that you're in. Why? Because he was inspired to say something. And that's why God puts words in our mouths, in our hearts that we can share with people. That's why God gives us insight that we can share with other people that will help them overcome the adversity that they're living in. And when we, are, when we become that church of Jesus that's willing to help somebody out and we're, we're walking under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and he's leading and guiding us because we're talking about flowing with the Holy Spirit. He's leading and guiding us throughout the course of our walk and throughout the course of our days. He's inspiring us. Why? Because he wants to change lives. Jesus is still in the life change business. Jesus is still in the healing business. Jesus is still in the resurrecting business. Jesus is still in the empowering business. And how does he do it? He doesn't do it through the building. He does it through his people. And he inspires us on the work that he wants to do. And what the Holy Spirit does is he comes into our lives and every day he inspires us. Here's what God wants to do. He tells us a little bit of what God wants to do. He includes us into what God wants to do. And it's up to us of whether we will walk it out. And on this day, Peter and what? John decided to walk it out. And because of they walked it out, one person's life would be changed. Inspired by truth. Inspired by the Holy Spirit that we're, le we're led into a place where we can bring change. We understand when we look at this thought about inspiration, we look at being inspired by not just inward things, but sometimes there's things externally that comes into our lives that cause us to get, you know, when, you, when you're inspired, you're like, we use these quotes, I'm all in. Man, you're inspired, I'm going to go for it with everything I got. When you're inspired, I'm going to give it everything that I have. When I'm inspired, I'm fully devoted. 
Those are words that people have been people that are inspired by something. And all, there's something in, in all of our lives that gives us this, this feeling and this glow that I can, I can do all things that are there because if they were able to do it, so can I. And if God was able to use them, so can he use me. He's inspired by the Holy Spirit. And each one of us, we'll feel with the Holy Spirit. We're inspired by him. We're empowered by him. And we're inspired to share the gospel and the good news of Jesus everywhere we go. And that's why we have to be an inspired church. Do you know somebody that was once was inspired but no longer is inspired? They somehow lost their, their passion. They lost their zeal for God. They lost their motivation from God. That's an uninspired person. If, you're gonna, if we're going to flow with the Holy Spirit, we've got to be inspired by his truth. That means we're something on the inside of us that has given us the passion to follow his truth and to follow his word out, to walk according to the counsel of his word and to fully be devoted to him. And not what the, what the world would say, but what the word of God would say. Then we say that my God can heal everybody. So we need to be inspired to go out there and lay our hands on as many people as God leads us to. We're inspired by God. And that's why we have to not only be a, an inspired people, we've got to be an inspired church. An inspired church is, is the churches where, where we'll take what little we have because sometimes we can deem that I don't have enough. We're not big enough. There is no church big enough for to do everything that God has called them to do. There is no church that has all the financial resources that they need that God has called them to do. But they're still got to be inspired by something. And see, when we become an inspired church, when God's people become an inspired organization, we don't look to the government to help lift people up. See, we start taking on the responsibility. If there's people hurting in our community, God has inspired his church to go out there and make a difference in where the government can say, and I'm not against the government program, but governments can say, hey, I can give you a voucher. The church would go in and say, I see there's a need in your life. I can teach you how to get beyond the voucher. Why? Because the church realized that we're inspired by truth to bring the truth to people. Not where they're guarding and just resting on a system. Why? Because we're inspired to say God wants to bring transformation into our community and there's people hurting in our community. And I'm not just sitting back because I lost my zeal and say, well, everybody in the world just going to hell. That's the wrong attitude. See, God has the inspiration that he puts in all of our hearts that he wants to what? God says he wishes that no one perish, but everyone comes to the what? Saving knowledge of who Jesus is. And if that's God's heart, he's inspiring his church to fulfill his heart. And so if that's God's heart, we have to stay inspired because there's people hurting in our community. And I'm just not waiting on the government to meet their needs. And, and, you know, we're going to vote. We're going to do all of those things that we need to do as citizens of the United States or whatever country you may be living in, in their, in their, in their system. But the church of Jesus is the savior of the world. And so we have to become, we have to be inspired by what does God's heart say. Look over in 1 Corinthians. I got to give, you know, 1 Corinthians chapter number 2. Because the Holy Spirit wants to put some things in our hearts and our minds this morning that will help us get way beyond the conditions of what we're walking in. And not only us, but help get, upon, get beyond the conditions that many people are walking with in this world. Because Jesus came to bring, a, what, a, be a rescue and redeem everyone that is lost. Everyone that's dealing with an addiction. Everyone that's wounded in their hearts. Everyone that's hurting because of life's challenges and circumstances that, that they're dealing with. Jesus came to bring salvation and freedom there. And we as a church cannot lose our passion or our zeal and become so comfortable with, well, they are out there and we're in here. We're in our comfort zone. They're in that comfort zone. We are called to go invade their world because that's his passion. The Bible says Jesus came to seek and save those that was lost. Why do we do that? Because we have to make sure that we have the mentality of Christ. 
1 Corinthians chapter 2, look at verse number 9. He says, however it is written, what no eyes have seen, what no ears have heard, and what no human mind has conceived. The things God has what? Prepared for those who love him. Paul's there. He says, now this is way beyond this. This is beyond the natural. Because we're talking about inspired by truth. This is way beyond just the human comprehension of what God will, wants to do because God will call you to do something that doesn't make sense to the person sitting next to you. God will call you, calls you to go out there and get your pot of soup and your ladle and a few cups and go out there and start feeding those that are hungry. And everybody said, well, you're not, you can't do that by yourself. You don't have enough this. You got to be careful. You can't go in those places. But God has laid something on your heart because he's trying to show you what he wants to do because God has something that's beyond what? Human comprehension. And God has inspired that in you. And then he says, because God has a way that he wants to change and transform his life. And he goes on and says, the things God has prepared for those who love him. And God has something in those people that is lost in this world that still have not accepted him as Jesus. And as their Savior and their Lord, he still loves them. The Bible says God so what? Love the what? World. He still loves the what? World. He still loves the what? World. That's the, the world relates to those that are what? Unsaved as a part of the world. God loves them. And God has a plan that he has prepared for those that what? He loved. Now, they may reject what he wants to do in their life, but he still has a plan for those that he what? Loves. And so what he does is he puts it into the minds of his people that are serving him. Here's what I want to do to all of those people that I'm loving out there that has not accepted me. I want you to take something out there and be a tangible expression of my love to those people there. And God is going to inspire our hearts while they are rejecting him. They may reject reject you, but you're still inspired to go out there and to serve those that are reject rejected you. I ain't getting no amens in this place today, but I want to tell you, this is truth here today. Because our minds can't wrap our minds around it. Because we say, when they come to church, we'll feed them. Well, well, when they get it right, I'll help them. Well, when they go to three Bible studies, now they can, now they are what qualified for this. See, God loves them in spite of who they are. And then he says, what I'm going to do is I'm going to inspire my people. I'm going to put it my heart. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to put my heart and my mind in their hearts in their minds so they can know what my desires are, that so they can go walk out my desires in the world that I love, that people can come to the saving knowledge of who I am. Even while they're saying, I don't want to hear what you have to say. I don't want to buy into what you're trying to do. But I, God says, I still love them. And so he still packs on his heart. He still packs in our hearts and our minds. Keep going, keep doing, keep speaking because I love them and I want them to come to the saving knowledge of who I am. And he keeps revealing that to us because God has what? He has prepared for those things that he has prepared for us. He loves. We've always looked at that. And some people have always approached it. I got a few more moments here. People have approached it as, well, that talks about heaven. That's just not a scripture about heaven. That's about present reality. These things, in verse number 10, these things God has revealed, why? By his what? By his spirit. We're talking about who? We just saw in the book of John, because we've got to put scriptures, connect them together over in John chapter number 16. He says, Jesus said, I'm going to send the spirit of truth, and he's going to lead you into what? All truth, and he's going to tell you things are yet to come. And now we see over where Paul is writing, he says, now... Here in 1 Corinthians, he says these are the things that God has revealed, and he's revealing it through what? The same spirit of truth that Jesus spoke about. He's revealing it. And what is he revealing? Let's keep reading. The spirit searches all things of God. 
even the deep things of God. Even the things that we can't even imagine or things that we can't, we can't even think of how God would, would desire to do. Paul was telling them, this is not surface stuff. He says, what I'm revealing to you, these are the deep things of God's heart and his mind about what he does and what he desires to do and what he wants his church to do and what he wants to inspire his church to do in our walk on an everyday walk. Keep reading in verse number 11. For who knows a person's thoughts except his own spirit with him in the same way. No one knows the thought of God except through who? The spirit of God. What we have received is not the spirit of the what? Of the world. But the spirit is from who? See, that's what I'm saying. See, that's where we inspire, our inspiration comes from. Through the spirit of God that he has put in us and the Holy Spirit is on the inside of us. He keeps putting in our minds and our thoughts and the things that God wants us to do and how God wants us to live and how God wants us to operate and how God wants us to change the world and what God's heart is regarding the different things that are out there and the things that God is passionate about and the things that he puts it in our hearts and our minds of what he wants to do. And he says, in that we've not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God so that we may understand what God has freely given to what? Us. The things that God has, not just physical things, not just the natural things, but the spiritual things. We have authority and power. God has called us to have dominion in this world and walk in spiritual dominion. And we have to understand the things that God has, has given, freely given to us. Do we have authority in this world? Spiritual authority in this world. Jesus said all authority is what? Given to me. Doesn't he say that we that no 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 weapon formed against us shall prosper? Then he tell you that you can walk on scorpions and things that the enemy will try to conquer congregate against you won't be able to prosper. See, this authority and the power in which God has freely given to us. We didn't do anything but accept Jesus, and it was given to us. We have keys to the kingdom of God freely given to us. Why? That we can be able to do the things that God has called us to do. But what happens is we have this limited mentality. We have this limited thought life. We're sometimes like this massive elephant on the chain and we're limited because what we have been conditioned to do or what people have told you in the past, you can't do that. That's for somebody else. And we, our limitations are constrained within our own lives. Because we say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I, I don't do it. It's the power of God in my life that does these things. It's, I don't accomplish this. It's God's hand, his power, and his desire that accomplish the things that will, that will happen. And we start looking at that, and so I be, we should become inspired by those things because it's not based on us. It's based on what God wants to do. And so we got to live this inspired life to go out, inspired lives to go out there and change this world and not live this limited mentality. You can come on out and live in this limited mentality of what God will do and what God desires to do. If we become an inspired church, right, we'll change our community. We'll be walking around not boasting in ourselves. I make my boast in the Lord. I boast in what God can do. I boast in what God will do through people in in his place that love him and are called by his name and are called according to his purpose. I make my boast in the Lord. Why? Because the Holy Spirit... My daily interaction, your daily interaction with him. Your daily time of communing with him and and spending time in his presence. He he comes in he keeps revealing to us more and more and more about the heart and the mind of God. And what we're called to do. Paul finishes this, this out with this thought. He says, 
He tells them that, you know, in the next couple of verses, this is foolishness to some. It's foolishness. Pastor, what you're talking about? This is, it's not even, is it really relevant? See, he says, the person that thinks that, they're not spiritual discerning. He said, I always tell, the natural mind can't conceive this. They consider it foolish. That's what the Bible, that's not what I said. That's what the Bible says. And so if you start talking to some people, they were like, man, that doesn't make any sense. You're just dreaming. That's a pipe dream. They don't understand the, the heart of God. Because God loves a world. And he says, whatever I have to do to reach those in the world, if he sent his own son to die on a cross for a world that rejected him. I want to give them a few more. He says, how would I not freely give them what? All things that would bring them in. I've given the greatest gift Everything else that I add on to it is just, it's a small in comparison. And when you start trying to explain that, some people say, that makes no sense. That's foolishness. It's way beyond your imagination for you to think in that. And I, but Paul finished up, he says, but what? We have the what? The mind of Christ. But we have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. I'm talking about being an inspired church. An inspired church has the mind of Christ. See, that's why we say we can change our community. Why? Because we got the mind of Christ. Our mind is, we, we don't have to do everything, but there's some things that God has placed in our heart as a church to do, and we have the mind of Christ because I know God wants to change the world, those people that are hurting out there beyond the borders of our church. Our outreach ministry is called what? Beyond the borders because we understand that God's power is not limited to a property. God's work is not limited to a tangible building. God's work goes beyond the borders of a building or church ground or address. It invades our world. And when we have the mind of Christ, we're saying, man, we're seeking how to help people resolve their issues and come to the knowledge of truth that Jesus is what? Is Lord to the glory of God. And so when the enemy tells you no, you say, I just tell them, say, I say yes to God. When the enemy says you can't do it, you just say, I can do everything that God has called me to do. So you got to talk to yourself. You got to talk to your mind. Don't do it in front of some people because they will label you. But uh, when you get in some other places, you got to talk to yourself, man. They'll label you in a heartbeat. Three things, you know, I always like to give you some things to think about before you walk out. I'm not going to preach them, so relax. I'm just going to tell them to you. You'll understand these things. It's just a redundancy. It says, you know what, to have this mind, to have this inspired mind, because you're inspired by the truth, you gotta, you got to conceive it in your own mind, in your inward thoughts. That's, it's got to be conceived there. It's got to give birth in your life. If it's not birth inside of you, it won't be birth in somebody else. That's why you said some people say, what happened? I used to do this, but somewhere along the line, I lost my passion. What happened? Come back to the things of God. God has called you for such a time as this that the church will stand. Number two, trying to be truthful to what I just said. I'm not going to preach the mind of Christ. 
enables you to discern spiritual things that natural cannot. We've already talked about that. And number three, having the mind of Christ allows you to see what is freely given to you or what's freely given to the church. And we have all the right re- all the resources that we need. And when we have the mind of Christ, we will understand God will take a little. He can make, a, make much. If he was able to take, you know, the story, the fish and a little bread from a little boy, and he was able to feed over 5,000 men, that's not including, you know, the women and the children, then he was able to take the little. And so we can have, if we're an inspired church, we'll say, here's what I do have, God. We're going to give you what we do have. We're going to do what we can do. We're going to step out in what we do have and not going to be, well, when we get this and when we get this and when we get this, what if we never get it? And God says, I just want to do it through this little vessel here. Here, I know that God will freely increase in every aspect of our lives. I shared one at the beginning of our sermon and our time together this today. I said there was, I was on the website that had 10 inspiring stories, and out of those 10, I chose two. We have already shared one regarding the elephant rope. I want to share this one as we're closing. The second of those two, and it's a little summary like I gave of the first one was, it's about three questions. And in this this summary about the three questions, it goes, it it reminds them that there's only one important time in life. It's that that time is now. It's the most important time because it's what, it is the only time where you have any power to do anything. And in this book, in this story about the three questions, it says that there was a king that had gone out and he was seeking answers to three questions. One of the questions that he was seeking an answer to is what is the best time to do things? The second thing, what he was seeking an answer to, what is the most important person or who is the most important person? And this third question that he was seeking an answer to is, what is the right time to do it? He went out about as he was seeking answers to that, that he said he would give a reward to anyone that was able to give him a, a satisfactory response. But as he went through the event, he eventually learned that there was no question, I mean, there was no response that satisfied him. And he came to the conclusion that he learned that through it was his own experiences and actions that was the best thing in the teacher in life. That was the summary of the story. Here's the theme of it. The theme of the three questions portrayed the importance of living in the present moment and taking personal action. The story emphasized the fertility of worrying about the past or the future and highlights the importance of engaging fully in life moments. So it doesn't matter what happened in your past, what mistakes you've made, what you didn't do, how you fell short. Repent, God forgives you of that. What matters is what you're doing right now. What are you doing in this present moment to be a change agent? See. We can talk about the history of Destiny Church, Brazos Christian, Brazos Port Christian Center, the branches of faith, the legacy of this church, which is all great, and we stand on the foundation of many people that came before us. But what's most important now is what is Destiny Church and the people of Destiny doing today to impact our community. If we're not inspired today, it doesn't remember, it doesn't matter about the past. It won't matter about what will come in our future if we don't do something today to impact our community. It don't matter. The moral of the story, the story teaches that the answers to life's biggest questions can only be found through action and experience rather than intellectual inquiry alone. Sometimes it's not what you say you're going to do, but it's what you do. It's what you're doing today. It's, uh, well, Lord, I, I'm going to do I, One day, soon. <laughs> but what are you doing today? That's what makes a difference in the world that's hurting out there. What is 
our church. That's why our church, we're talking about soaring higher in some of the programs that we're doing and things that we're hosting is why. Because we want to do something today that changed our world of those that are hurting. What are we doing today? Are you inspired to keep going? Don't say, well, they ain't listening. Don't, you keep shouting anyway. Well, they don't want to hear it. You keep speaking the truth anyway. They're rejecting it. You are not the first to be rejected. I'm sorry. You're not the first. But you keep going because why? I'm inspired by the truth that Jesus wants to say and he wants to use his people to bring about the saving knowledge of Jesus. So here's what it is. Don't give up. Look at somebody and say, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't quit. Don't throw the towel in. Don't throw up the white flag. Whatever other phrase you want to use, don't do it. Because what should motivate you, inspire you to keep praying, to keep worshiping, to keep preaching, to keep believing is the love that God has for this world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that those that don't know him can come to the knowledge of the truth. Father, I thank you today that we will be let us be inspired people. Let us choose God to be inspired by your love and your grace and your mercy. Let us choose God to continue to run this race with faith and perseverance. Let us choose God not to look to our left and our right and be distracted by life's circumstances and things beyond our own natural control. Now let's not look back at our past, God, and be provoked to walk backwards instead of moving forward in Christ Jesus. Let us stand in this present reality of all the things that you've said, God, the things that you've promised, the things that you've called us to, that we will we will stir up, as Paul told Timothy, we will stir up something within us. We'll stir our own faith up. When everybody else around us may look like they're dry and drying up. No, no, not, not so, not I, Lord. I'll stir myself up in the Lord. When the worship team stops worshiping, I'll still continue to worship you, God. When there's nobody else to pray, God, I'll, I'll pray and I'll come calling upon the name of the Lord. I'll stir myself up in the Lord. And God, we'll be a church that is inspired by truth to go out to tell somebody about Jesus. there's somebody here today, if you need to say we, we won't end our service, but if you need to give Jesus and invite him into your heart and your life, if you need to rededicate your life, this is a great moment to do that. We're going to pray a prayer and you can just pray along with us. It's, it's, it's as simple as that. You just invite him and say, dear Jesus, if that's you this morning, you said, I need a relationship with Jesus. I need to rededicate my life. It's just simple. Say, dear Jesus, I invite you into my heart. I invite you to be my Lord and my Savior. I confess, God, that Jesus, you came and you died for my sins. I may not understand it, but I've heard about, I heard your name, and I, and, and I believe, God, what you said, because I've tried everything else. And so, God, I give my life to you today. 
and ask you that you take control of every aspect of my life. And you direct me on my going and my coming. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen and amen and amen. God bless you today. Be inspired to walk in the truth. I'm going to invite our prayer team to come forward. And if there's someone in this place and you need prayer, as the worship is going, we're going to invite you to come forward for prayer. God, everybody stand. We love you. Thank you for being a part of our service today. Be blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. sing praises to your name.
blessed Sunday and the great rest of your week.